Hello, and welcome to the first episode of the House Coheris Custom Dragon Rider series. We are playing as Lord Dragon Coheris here. Let's get right on into it. So, no more dilly dallying. We're making the series. Now, you might look at this whole beautiful map of Westeros and Western Estos, and you might ask, where are we going to start? There are a lot of great options. We are playing on the Petty Kingdom start. It's been a year because I've been doing a few things, so it's not quite at the beginning, but we'll give you guys the rundown here in a sec, guys and gals. I looked at my <laughs> demographic that watch, and I have 1% female listening uh, audience, so that one's for you. But we will zoom in here, and you might ask, where are we going to go? The co used to be the great lords of Harrenhal before the Strongs, and I think actually the Haraways were before the Strongs, and before that, it was the co -Harris. Well, we are going to be on the tiny, humble Witch's Isle. It is a tiny fiefdom. It is a measly level 3. It's actually not too bad. A level 3 castle holding. We will probably try to expand into Runestone some. Maybe try and take over Gold Town. Probably poach these two, maybe. That could be an option, because if we get one, we'll probably be strong enough to take the other with our alliances. Enough talk about the future, let's get into the present and look at ourselves. Let's check ourselves out. We are Lord Dragon, the 18-year-old dragon rider. He's the lone member of House Coheris after, uh, unfortunately, Gargan the Guest, our brother, this is not canon, uh, was slain in the godswood. He was castrated because he was a disgusting liege, and the reason he got the guest is because he took full advantage of, oh, what is it? Uh, is it, uh, Lord's Right? Uh, it's something at the wedding where the Lord gets to f pretty much dibs on the bride. It's pretty gross, but our nasty brother Gargan participated, and that is going to be why we are here. We'll say, uh, our father sired a, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what our reason for being is, but we are Weirwood of the Seven, because the Royces have granted us land, but we've had to convert to their religion, will be our little roleplay reason. Now, I think the big thing is, we need to find a spouse, we need to have a couple more Coheris running around, so before we look at our dragon, Let's find a spouse. Now, our options are not going to be too great. Just because we are a brand new house. We don't have any renown. <laughs> so, let's see. Does Megan Mason might be a good choice. 700 alliance power. Mm, see, I would pick Dariessa Valarian if she wasn't less than a year old. These are some fellow Veilmen, and I think it might have to be Megan Mason be quick high chance of children two traits that we can pass down which are both ours sounds great we'll do that we'll send a proposal off to megan mason she's a riverlander and not sure where it is i'm not going to try and go on a little search for her but if we do complete that that'll give us an alliance of around 700 troops which is going to be more than enough if we want to start bullying some of our neighbors so with that being said let's go ahead and start fabricating a claim on the etchings as you can see, that that will take nine months. I've already arranged my council. It is not great, especially my marshal and my admiral. Being eight and seven marshal is pretty terrible. One thing you see here is he is on organized schemes instead of oversee realm. I forgot to increase development. I always just do that one instead of collect tax because I feel like in the long run it'll end up paying off if you can boost your development up. Anyways, what I was saying, I do. Whenever I'm running an intrigue build, which is what we are, we, or I say we, I always do this second one, which gives me another max hostile scheme. And if you come in here, I do have the truth is relative perk. So that will allow us to start fabricating hooks on pretty much anybody. So that's what we'll do. Not him, because he is 17. He'll probably be able to resist us. 
Let's find it. King Baron of the Claw. Excellent, excellent. Fabricate hook. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And let's just find another king. Because they will have more gold. Therefore, you can eventually demand more gold. So what we're going to do is we're going to fabricate a ton on hooks. And when we get invited to pilgrimages and tournaments and all the other things, we'll be able to travel around. And eventually, we will be able to get enough to afford the Golden Obligation Steward Perk. Which, you can demand payment for hooks. So in combination with this, fabricating hooks is a little infinite money source. And if we go ahead and start early with the fabricating of hooks, we will have lots of lots of money built up in the bank, essentially, when we are ready for that. So, enough yapping. I feel like uh, it's time to get into what the people are here for, and let's check out our dragon. Here we go. Gorgosa, 99 years old. I did just give ourselves the Dragon Rider trait, so this is not a tamed dragon. This is what the game has generated for us, but I did not customize it any further. Let's check them out. 11 Temperament, 110 Draconic Drag, Dread, 116 Combat Effectiveness. That seems pretty decent in this size. For, so I always just pick Adult Dragon. I don't go with... I guess I could go with a Hatchling. That'd be fun to like raise it up. But anyway, this is the biggest one I think I've gotten, is 125. That seems to be quite large. Um, I think that is, like, the size of Vermithor. A bit bigger than Vermithor at the Dance of Dragons. I might be mistaken. Let's see if we can, um, actually see. Who is this? This is King Amon of the Gullet, and he is... The rider of Caraxes. So see how big Caraxes is. 58. So we are much, much bigger than Caraxes. But we are also about... I think we're actually three times as old. Interesting. So this is King Jaharis the Conciliator. And I think he actually rides the Bron Bronze Fury himself. What is he? 88. So he's not too big right now. What is Vagar? 139. Okay, so we're actually a little smaller than Vagar currently. Not sure what size Vagar is at the Dance of Dragons or what size Cannibal is. If you guys have seen and gals have poked around anywhere uh, in terms of just like Reddit, YouTube, anything you guys will and gals will know that Cannibal is an absolute menace since the update has dropped. I think it's just one of those funny things that's like Balerion and Vagar should kind of be like the powerful ones, you could say. One of the things, I'm going to pin a couple characters that we know, like Princess Rhaenys, who eventually goes and marries, marries Corlys in canon. We'll also go over to uh, Prince Balon, and I'll pin Daemon and Viserys, just to see what they get up to. And why don't we come over here Lord Damon. We will also pin Corliss to Sea Snake. Maybe. There we go. No. <laughs> if I can keep like fat thumbing it. There we go. So we got a couple characters pinned. Why did I pin her? She's a giant? Is that why? Alright, but we got these four characters pinned, and we'll just kind of keep an eye on them, see what they get up to as we play through. So, the overall. The stated objective of our campaign is going to be to restore House Coharis to Harrenhal. How we do it is up to us. We can get there anyway, but that will be the overall goal. I didn't want to put us in, in terms of like starting this off. I didn't want to go ahead and just like throw us into the Harrenhal Duchy, the Kingdom of the Gods. I thought that might be a little too easy, so I just chucked us out here into the Vale. I've also been wanting to play around with some of the different religions more. I think the next one I might do is like a, a red god fanatic or something like that. Might do um who know maybe maybe Stannis Stannis and add some dragons and go in debug mode and just like hand out a bunch of dragon eggs to people and just see what happens. Be Stannis at Dragonstone. That could be neat. Or, I don't know. We'll play around with the next one and see, but that'll be a little ways in the future. 
like I said, we are currently developing a claim on the etchings. We were going to try and... Because I think, first of all, there's a couple... There's a slight progression we need to follow to get to Heron Hall. First, we're going to have to build up a bigger base. Just Witch's Isle. Okay, so what is this? A invitation from our liege to join their council. Council. Not council. Recently moved to North Carolina, and uh, <laughs> my twang has come out a bit more, it seems like. I've come to the inexorable conclusion that you truly are the best candidate I have opened for my council position. Though it pains me to do so, I am unfortunately obligated to offer you the position of Spy Master of Runestone. Except, we'll take that, and we will come over and see exactly what that does. So, we have 30 Intrigue. It'll give us plus 30 Natural Dread. Our Hostile Scheme Power will be at plus 15. Our Hostile Scheme Success Chance will be plus 6%. And monthly intrigue lifestyle experience plus 15%. And it looks like. Okay. For a second, I thought that was my council, even though I was reading <laughs> our job in our Legion's council. Just because I'm not used to looking at that screen. But when the Admiral disappeared there, I was like, great. We have to replace one of our bad council members with an even worse one. So we have married Lady Megan of Witch's Isle. She's a Mason. Uh, like the. Like the masons that get like the rings and the tattoos and all the weird stuff. And like one of the American... Are they... I don't think it's an American secret society. I think they were around before. I don't know. <laughs> I never really understood the masons. That music's kind of loud. <laughs> Let me... Turn that down just a touch. Hopefully that music isn't too loud. If it is, please let me know in the chat so I can adjust it for next time. So guys, this is going to be a little self-plug opportunity as we are just kind of waiting for our claim to develop and then we'll go to war and light some dragon fire. Before I do the plug though, how about we go and ride Gorgason? Gorgoson? Oh, Gorgo. Let's get up there. Look at this beautiful dragon, the white dragon. Hers with anticipation is like climbing to his saddle. The connection with him is something I feel nowhere else. Now, I wonder if this is just assumed male? Because sometimes it takes a sec to learn your actual, yeah, male assumed. Gorgo rolls in approval as I pull the reins back, driving him higher and higher. We climb into the sky. Could you imagine, like, like it's in today's age it's pretty crazy being on a plane and like looking down or like being on like a mountaintop i went on like the sandia tram Pe peak tram uh in new mexico right on outsides of albuquerque and you can like go up on the mountain and look out everywhere and it's terrifying but it also puts in perspective just like how small everything is and same with like being on a plane as it's taking off but having like you get those experiences every now and then modernly but back in this age where that's just not a thing being this high up on a dragon must be absolutely incredible must be like the most jarring adrenaline fueled experience just spitting in the faces of your gods flying around <laughs> on this giant beast So what, after we fly, we will also go ahead and try and deepen our bond with Gorgo. Oh, and one of the people we're fabricating a hook on has actually kicked the dust. So let's find someone else with low intrigue. You are perfect. We will start our hook fabrication immediately. That's basically what I do if someone dies or... A hook has not expired, but um, lost my train of thought, whatever. But if uh, I just keep them going, it's like a little factory, just put it on auto autopilot and just keep on going as many as I can. No, not all of runestone, but yes, present my claim on the etchings. So we will do this, and I think we will go ahead and get straight to war. How about it? We'll declare war on the etchings. 
He does not have any alliances. Oh my goodness. So it looks like we're going to have to do a little, a little magic here. More declaration. Had to adjust our vassal contract with the Royces. We were not allowed to declare war. Now we are. We pay a little bit more each month. But it's not going to be bad. And once we take the etchings, we'll probably make up for it anyways. So, let's go ahead and declare war. We will then call in our allies, the Masons, somewhere else in the Riverlands. Let's do that. And of course, we have our dragon. Who will raise all armies. Let's hit him. We have more soldiers, it seems. And I was reading in the depths that they were going to... Oh, what is this? Ally joins war, greeting Lord Darren. Our foes shall tremble. The devs are going to make it a bit easier to see what your dragon does in battles and stuff. Because, like, I think it should... Commander is us. It'd be so funny if we just got killed here. Just like, welp, and welcome to a new episode. <laughs> oh, man. That would actually be hilarious. Alright, so our wife is pregnant. That is wonderful. A couple enemies are captured. Did we just annihilate their host? So, oh, up here. Uh, yeah, pretty much. So, the way to see what our dragons did is going to be to look at the kills. And our levies, levies killed 87. Our knights killed 62. But 501 people were unalived. Where, where else is that? We don't have any minute arms. That is essentially, well, I guess there's a couple here. Like 20, 22, whatever. It's not, not the 500. That is essentially what our dragon did. He kind of munched up like the remaining 300 or so, whatever it was. Whatever it might be. In oh, I just actually hit my Windows button. Okay. <laughs> Let's dra drag this back up. But yeah, so like I said, I read that the devs are working on a way to implement like a better way to see it, to view it, and I'm sure that'll happen before too long. Okay, this Donald fella is in our prison. Where would it of the seven seem with Samwell? Hmm. Now I normally just banish people to the watch. I banish them. But what if I recruit, take the vows? Can I do that too? <laughs> recruit, take the vows. I think they both go already follow Weirwood of the Seven. You know, since we converted to the religion, we might as well give others the same chance and we'll give them a chance at our court. Not really sure, like, the difference between Weirwood of the Seven and just the Seventh. I think it's literally just that they have a Weirwood doctrine, which is pretty neat, pretty cool. Don't mind it. Fort in the etchings. Now, we could use our dragon. We'll decide how to use Gorgos into Siege. I think we will. So I stand before the walls of the etchings, my dragon Gorgo at my side. Our men surrounding the walls of the defenders trapped within, cowering behind their walls. Kind of like the scene from Game of Thrones when the Golden Company's stuck there, just hissing in their boots. Um, the walls will not protect them from dragon fire. Minor. Minor Dragonfall, Siege Destruction, Siege Destruction, four months, eight months. We'll go with this one, we're going to hurry that up. And so that'll increase it, it'll only take four months now, it took 16 months off, which is fantastic. We'll see if we can feed them some raw pork. Just because I don't want to go into debt, especially in a war, the other option, other, the other option, words are hard, cost 10, cost 20. I mean, and this one costs 10, so that's why we went with that. And the Masons are coming. They've got a couple bowmen, 100 bowmen. If you've uh, seen my streams before, you do know that the bowmen are my favorite men-in-arms. Do we have anything special? 
that we can create as men at arms units? I do not believe so. We need to see snakes, which I don't like them. I don't like uh, skirmisher units most of the time. But I also don't understand the combat mechanics too, <laughs> too great. I'm more of the um, fan of bigger army equals win, <laughs> especially in de on defense. So like uh, some of the pursuit and stuff doesn't really make as much sense. But anyways, I'll probably just look at it, look it up one day. Let's see what this is. Bonding with Gorgo, reaching new heights. Gorgo greets me almost eager. I thought that should say eagerly. Eagerly? As I enter his lair, clutching a saddle. Clearly, I'm not the only one yeaning for this guy's. With uncommon agreeableness, he allows me to attach a saddle and mount him. As I nod to my attendants, we step out into the open air. With each beat of his wings, we soar higher and higher until my castle is but a tiny splotch of color below. Like, this is what I mean. This is what I was talking about earlier. Being so high up there. This is why Euron's so crazy, because he was given the power to fly, but then it was taken away from him. Like, maybe that's why he he wants power so much, because he wants that god power. He wants to be able to fly again. He's in rare form today, and under my reins, Gorgo feels as swift as the legendary Nasirion, and as powerful as the infamous Turax, who, thank goodness, are dead. wonder what happened to them. Let's see. Flew away in the direction of Lyria. So I wonder if... So they're not dead, just gone. I wonder if he can uh, fly back. Terex. I don't know if these are actual, like, dragons. What happened to you? Unknown causes. So he is gone. Swing amidst the heavens, the wind rushes past. Okay. Look at this backdrop to clouds. Our bond grows stronger. Excellent. We get closer with our dragon. So we will keep on continuing. Our allies, the Masons, are about to enter. We'll enter the fray. I'm glad <laughs> they finally got here. Looks like we didn't really need them much anyways, but I guess it's good to speed this last little stretch along. It'll be 18 days until the fort is ours, and you are noticing I'm playing on a relatively slow speed, specifically the slow speed. That's what it's called. Just because just I like to just take my time, see things out, see how it goes. And also, my laptop is a bit of a potato, and if I run too fast, it'll crash. But anyways, I just like to take the scenic route, we could say. <laughs> So let's go ahead and enforce these demands. It'll increase our legitimacy. We will have another holding, and we could actually have one more. Maybe we'll take Bronze Guard or something, but for now, we will disband our troops. Hit resume, and how about we go and check out our prisoners? We have Gwenda here, and we have Jasper. Hmm. We'll take that hook. And is Jasper worth bringing on? He actually has a much better marshal and is a maester. So I'm going to actually try and recruit him. Take the vows. <laughs> Can I demand conversion? There we go. He shall join us. He'll be our warrior maester. Because he is terrible. Like, let's see. I have no choice but to accept the conditions. You're absolutely right. He's a Septon Maester man. Can I not? Oh well. Can I replace him though? So it doesn't look like I can replace him. I'm not sure why. My wife just came in and scared the absolute fudge out of me. Almost demonetized the video. <laughs> so we discover that Jasper is a witch. Our newly recruited maester.
and we will increase the control of the etchings with our piss poor marshal. Said the force of my dreams through the efforts to become a truly feared and respected figure, a vast number of guilty and disloyal persons have ended up in my dungeons. Ooh, political prisoners. Those are our favorite type of prisoners. Many lowly cutthroats and pickpockets from the countryside and cities await their fate. Apart from society, but apart from society, but I perhaps have a better idea for them. Yes, yes. How else we make them work? <laughs> my vocab machination. <laughs> I envision a forest of impa oh my low lives and traitors surrounding up close to Haven on all sides. A grim reminder to everyone of what happened when the Lord is betrayed. I see the row after row of common criminals spreading out into the horizon. The hill stained in their blood. Oh my. But we will gain a bit more uh, intrigue. So we'll do that. And our wife is currently pregnant. Eight months, so we'll have our child soon. Hopefully they will inherit both of our traits. Now all the f we'll feel the Lord Dragon, or Dragon the Impaler. Veterans for justice may be harsh. So we're sticking people up everywhere. Alright, we have a son. Let's check him out. Gaiman Coharis. No traits, unfortunately. Is Gaiman a decent name? I kind of like it. We'll, we'll stick with Gaiman. What's the Gaiman in can Is it Gaiman Pale Hair? The, uh... Let me not spoil anything. Because I think he might... Show up before too long. If he hasn't made an appearance already in Hot D. So it leads some control of Witch's Isle. That is not great because our marshal is pretty piss poor and it'll already take 15 years. Already. So let's see if we can do this. There is another way to try and get some better uh, marshal. We're going to matronally marry one of our courtiers. Let's see what we can do. Let's go. Andrew, there you go. Welcome to our court. Do we have another one? Bonding with Gorgo. Time well spent after weeks of training, socialization, and familiar that I've spent with Gorgo had finally started to bear fruit. Whether it's soaring above which, which is Isle or relaxing in his lair, Gorgo and I are increasingly at ease with each other. Great, great. We bond with our dragon a bit more and we will keep it going. And we will bring him in as well. Let's see if that one works. Alright, great. We got two 18 martial people that'll come in. Nine years instead of... What was it? 18 before? That's fantastic. Eight on him. Good, 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 good. Good, 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 good. And you can do that with any of your positions. You just find one of your female courtiers. Hit find spouse. Go to maternal marriage. Look, you can find a new steward that way. We'll bring him in. See Lewin here. 17 years. Let's check this out. We'll get the notification here in a second. When we find strength and support in our union. Welcome to Witch's Isle. Assign. 10 years. Great, great, great. You can do the same with Spymaster. That's what it is. And that's how I build my knights up too. Generally, I will arrange marriage. Go into, let's find Kalara here. My journal. We'll search. Oh. Dine as a lord. Mm, no, not yet. They won't have the money to just spin willy-nilly on that. So we will go... What was I doing? Lost paternity thought. Prowess. When, if we come in here, we can check out different people's prowess. 22. That's not too bad. He's a formidable fighter. Borean. This one, this guy's a bit younger. 21. Let's see, and then Borean will come and join us at our court. And generally, it'll auto assign him into our knights. Your courtier Kalara and my acquaintance Borean will be joined in holy matrimony. So if we come in here, 
let's look at our knights and check that out. Borean's here. And we do have two accolades we can make, and we will probably do that here in a second. You know what? Let's go ahead and knight this Borean character, this Borean lad. 77% chance he will accept any one we can have you squire. There you go. I believe the upcliff was actually the original holder of Witch's Isle. And why not? We'll give Borean the Eagle of Upcliff's Hagen. A skull. Ah. <laughs> There we go. The skull of Upcliff's skeleton. Great accolade. And you know, since he is one of our acclaimed knights, we need to get him out of these peasant robes. Let's get him into... That's Valyrian high armor. I don't normally care about, like, what exactly... Ooh, we'll do that one. But can't have, can't have a lowborn in. Valyrian high armor. So it says it needs a worthy successor. Can I seek worthy successor? So I think one will come to me, which will be great. Scribes, we have letters to compose. That is great. That is one of those hooks I was talking about. Another one down. And now I think it is about time we should probably go on a pilgrimage. So we're going to try and do enough to go ahead and just get the steward perk. So let's plan a pilgrimage down to Asinia's Hill. Because we are going to go and select travel options and take flight. This way we will take our dragon as our mode of transportation. Then we'll customize the route. So we want to find some steward spots. We'll hit you up. Thank you, Starfish Spire. And of course, actually, Witch's Isle. Gotta hit that one. Are there any more steward ones nearby? 100 diplomacy. There we go. What are you? Diplomacy. Now, there's a ton of them across the Narrow Sea, which we're gonna try and hit them. And there's a lot more we could be hitting, a couple different ones. But I just want to get go ahead and get the demand payment going so we can start getting some gold flowing. So once we get the gold flowing, we will be able to do a few other things. Martial lifestyle. Mm, let's go get that dragon lore while we're at it. So from Vicinia's Hill, we will directly go to here, to the Bleeding Bay. Let's get these ones. And you know, while we're here, we're going to hit, hit the whole thing. Might as well. We'll hit them all. Make sure we have to grab that steward experience right there. This will all make sense here in a second. Once we start actually rolling. But that's not it. Some of these can be a little tricky to actually click. That, and I'm just bad at it. So we'll come on, come on. Here we go, here we go. With the Temple of Relor. What do you want to give us? Diplomacy? Learning? Diplomacy? I don't think this is going to be enough. <laughs> don't think this is going to be enough to get it off the rip. Diplomacy, diplomacy, diplomacy. I think those are all diplomacy. we go zero one okay we'll try it good enough 
could definitely get some more spots in there, especially since we are on our dragon. But we, like I said, we're just focusing on that steward tree. And we're not sweating so hard. That, and it's boring. Watch me just sit there and click, 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 click each little one. We visited Gold Town. My phone just fell on the ground. I, oh, almost ripped my headphones off. Going crazy. Yes, we're just traveling on up. Making our way on the pilgrimage. Look how fast we travel on our dragon. It is fantastic. I'm someone that loves to do the pilgrimage. I just recently got to Tours and Torney, Tourney's uh, DLC, which is kind of surprising because of how much I used to do it. Just like the different Tours and Tourney's and stuff, and it adds so much great content, doing so many different things, and being able to just fly on your dragon back makes it so much faster. It can sometimes take up to two years to do these great pilgrimages. I like to do a lot of times I'll play as High Tide, and eventually get Dragonstone, and I'll do a pilgrimage down to Old Town, and I'll go like all the way up and around and down and up and then I'll either go through the marches and up this way and hit Storms Inn and Tarth, or I'll kind of like come across here and try and hit one of the free cities. That is normally the name of the game, but since we are on Dragonback, it's going much, much quicker. And let's see. <laughs> Yeah, we're, so we need a thousand lifestyle experience. Visit the Kingdom of the Claw. Am I reading that down? All right, ten steward <laughs> lifestyle. That's not quite. I sure did. <laughs> That's not quite what we need. We need a bit more than that. Are these? We need a hundred. We need ten thousand. So we'll come in here to Basinia's Hill. This isn't normally one of the spots I normally pilgrim to. Let me just go to Old Town or Mudgrave or one of those ones. I also made sure to stop out here to get some dragon lore information. The Field of Fire. It was Aegon's conquest. All three dragons burned the combined armies of the Reach and the Lannisters. I've truly walked the Holy Path and will gain the Pilgrim trait. I like doing Pilgrims because on your first one you gain the Pilgrim trait and you gain the Traveler trait. We can come in here. We can actually just see what those do. So Diplomacy plus one off rip. And that is without getting to the next stage. And if you look, uh, when it gets to the Wanderer, you get a bit more of a boost. And then Season is a nice boost as well. You get some Stewards, some Prowess, Travel Safety, Consulting Dragon Lore. We'll do this one because it is 63% chance I will send to the Citadel and Dragonstone. I'll use the old Valyrian lore there. Didn't even read the other option. So it would have been nice for our son to inherit at least one of our traits, but at the end of the day, it's not the end of the world that he didn't. I'll transfer it all to you. Your pilgrim, pilgrim becomes more pious. Eh, it seems hardly worth it. As I stroll, let's read what it, the scenario is. As I stroll around the streets of Vicinius Hill, I stop in front of a small sept. The building is comparatively bland and humble, but a small crowd of pilgrims has gathered in front of it. When I'm moving closer, I realize they are scratching their heads trying to make sense of the plaque next to one of the guardian statues written in a foreign language. Ooh, I could help out my... Let's translate it. Did I say transfer? <laughs> That's why I need to just, like, read the whole word, not just skim. I think I said transfer it to you. We spent time in prayer. That is wonderful. It is lovely. You love to see it. Magical, isn't it? We will continue on our way. Here we go. What's next? Well, it'll be time to pray. The 
echo of my own footsteps is the only sound in the sept, and I am alone. So let's go ahead and get a prayer out. Whisper a few words. I'm not sure if we actually picked a... Not this one. Where is it? Wait. Oh, that's the one. <laughs> Did we designate a... My patron. Select a new patron. Subscribe to the Patreon. Um, let's go with... Where's the fertility one? The mother. Color me intrigued. I'll pass. We saunter past the King's Landing Market and we're approaching a peculiar man. He unabashedly addresses us. My lord, you look like a refined gentleman. I know of a simple divine experience not far from King's Landing. Let's try it. Color me intrigued. Quite the distance outside of King's Landing, we come to a sudden halt. Our guide, John. Let's check him out. Is he a weirdo? He's a callous craven, and he's a bit impatient. This is a hidden passage of end up in a small cavern, illuminating by the daylight falling through a hole in the roof. Through that very same hole, a truly and remarkable wellspring pours serenely. Okay, that looks pretty cool. Flowing water glows with a divine splendor and faint misty rainbow colors to air. Oh, wow. How extraordinary. That would actually be kind of crazy to stumble upon something like that. A little spring in a cave that has a rainbow mist around it from the sunlight? That would be insane. <laughs> that would be crazy. Bit more of the faith currency. Piety. Piety. Jesus juice. Mother juice. I think that's our patron. We did. We just selected. So eight years in the etching. Visited the wall of the seven skulls. We visited Storms Inn. How about we go down here and actually check our travel out? Lace cliffs. We are in Essos. We're over in Mir right now. Doesn't take any time at all to, to fly there. Uh, we'll stop and discuss it with them. I think that's an event that always fires in Mir. There's a couple different places that always have events that fire. I know there's uh, at Winterfell. When you travel to Winterfell, if you go and visit the Old Gods, or the Godswood, you can convert to the Old Gods. And if you go and check out the Glass uh, Gardens... Or whatever it is, you can make like the sun house, the green room, buildings. At least there's an option to like create an artifact, something like that. Um, I'm not sure of too many others off the top of my head. I wish there was one out in the Iron Islands, like at Nagas Hill or something. I wish that would let you like convert to the faith of the Ironborn. That'd be pretty cool. This is your signature, is it not? So we gain another hook, and we'll start another hook. Scheme fabrication on this guy. So with that being said, actually... We have two. We can get two going. So with that being said, I think with that completion of the pilgrimage, this video is going to be about a little under 45 minutes. I think that's a good place to stop. We will save our game. And resume. And so, guys, thank you very much for watching and checking out the first episode of Cal House Coheris and our quest to reclaim Heron Hall. If you enjoyed the video and are not subscribed, think about giving me a little subscription. We do some daily discussions, images, and polls over on the community page. Go and check it out. There have been talks about creating a Discord, uh, a channel Discord. So if you are interested in something like that, again, let me know down in the comments. And if there are any videos, ideas, or something you would like to see, again, you know where to leave the suggestions. Thank you very much for watching, and have a good day.